Hi students, till now we have understood what is learning, what are the characteristics of learning, what are the definitions. Now we will see what are the different types of learning. Some are simple, some require thinking, some require higher order thinking, some are just responses to some stimuli. These different kinds of learning have been classified by Robert Gane into eight kinds of learning. Let us see what they are. From the lowest level to the highest, we can list the different types of learning as signal learning, stimulus response learning, chaining, verbal association, discrimination learning, concept learning, principal learning, problem solving. In all, there are eight types of learning as given by Robert Gani. We will try to understand more about each of these types of learning. At the end of this session, you should be able to explain the various types of learning. Now, let us see what are those types. From the lowest signal learning to the highest problem solving, we have signal learning, SR learning, chaining, verbal association, discrimination learning, concept learning, principal learning or rule learning and problem solving. First of all, let us see what is signal learning. Here, we do not make any efforts to give our response. These are all reflex actions. When we see balloons, we are happy. When we see some place which has given us pleasant experiences, we are very happy, we like them. Wherever we have got unpleasant experiences, we dislike those places. The moment I see that place, dislike is developed in me. When a child hears sound, the child is frightened. When a child sees the teddy bear, he is very happy. So these are all responses which are not learned, but they are autonomous responses, reflex actions. Autonomous nervous system is responsible for this kind of learning. This is therefore called the lowest type of learning. So all our likes, dislikes, anxieties, fears, superstitions, they are all because of this kind of learning, that is signal learning. Next is stimulus response learning. For every stimulus, the individual learns to give the correct response. In the process of learning, we saw how many times the individual will have to practice to give the right response to your right stimulus. And this takes a lot of practice, but once it is learnt, the individual can only give a particular response to a particular stimulus. A higher order of learning than this is called chaining, in which we learnt to give the responses in a particular order and all these responses have been learned previously. For example, when some game is to be played, there are a series of behaviors which have to be exhibited in a sequence. For example, if one is to cycle, the individual first learns to sit on the bicycle, then keep the legs on the pedals, then hold the handles correctly, then push the pedals. So, the sequence of responses are remembered by the individual in the form of a chain and is exhibited in continuation. So, such kind of learning which involves several learnt responses given in a sequence is called chaining and this is a higher order learning than giving a specific response to a specific stimulus. Next to that, we learn to associate words with the stimuli. We are able to recognize different objects or stimuli with names. For example, we are able to say this is a flower, these are trees, this is a forest, these are tides, these are animals. So, such verbal association is the next level of learning. Then the next higher order learning is discrimination learning. Here, we are able to discriminate between the different flowers we see, between the different animals we see. For example, in a flower show, a child will be able to say, these are roses, these are lilies, these are dahlias. 
Among the animals, these are donkeys, these are horses, these are cows. So, in this way, if you are able to dis discriminate between similar stimuli, this is a next higher order thinking. After that comes the concept learning. What are the concepts or the phenomena? We try to understand and then even define those particular events or phenomena. For example, rain. What is rain? We have an idea about rain. We are able to associate rain storms, rain drops, thunder storms and call them all as rain and we won't call snow or sun or tears as rain and we are able to have a definition of rain as to how it is caused. The water vapor which goes to the sky forms clouds and condenses and comes back to the earth as rain. We are able to explain this phenomena when we have concept learning and we are always able to even give the characteristics of rain. How does it express itself? How does water precipitate? So, this is concept learning. Similar to this, we learn many concepts in our life. The concept of table, chair, the concept of sea breeze, land breeze, tides, earthquakes, volcanoes. Several concepts are learnt like this and this involves several discriminative ability which is learnt in the previous learning and the such discrimination is used in order to form concepts. Once we have understood several concepts, then we will be able to understand the rule. For example, what is density? Density is mass per unit volume. Density is the rule. What are the concepts necessary for understanding this rule? mass and volume. Mass is a concept, volume is a concept and the relation between them forms a rule and that can be understood only if we have prerequisite concepts developed in our mind regarding mass and volume. Similarly, there are several rules. There is that Boyle's law, Charles law and there is that rule that higher we go, in, go up from the sea level it becomes cooler and how the land breeze happens, how the sea breeze. These are various examples as to how we learn rule and even in economics we learn how the price is fixed by the demand and supply operation and all that. So, every rule requires the prerequisite understanding of certain concepts. So, when we are moving ahead, it is to be understood that for every higher type of learning, the prerequisites are all the different lower types of learning. The highest form of learning is problem solving. It requires the prerequisite learning of all the other seven types of learning. When we are posed with a problem, we try to look into our repertoire of rules to find out which rule will help us to solve this problem. For example, if I see a choke drain, I know that what is required here is suction through vacuum and I will use a vacuum suction pipe to remove all the choking and then clear the drain. If I have to move a liquid from one container to another, again I know the same force is to be operated and we will use that. And if I have to prepare a bag, I will try to see that the bag will have a wide handle so that it won't put so much of pressure on the shoulders of anyone who carries that bag. In this way, we make use of several of the rules which we have learnt in order to solve a particular problem. And this is the highest level of thinking which we should aim to develop in the learners. But then we cannot uh, avoid any of the learning of the previous kinds of learning and we should always proceed from simple to complex and over a period of time the individual becomes capable of learning the rules and then solving problems. But unfortunately in our school learning we have made students learn and reproduce because of which students do not have clear concepts and clear understanding of the rules and that's why they are not able to apply them to daily life problems. As teachers, it is our duty to see that we develop clear concepts in the students so that they understand the rules and then apply them to solve problems. Till now, we have learnt about eight kinds of learning. Starting from the lowest level of learning, it is signal learning which is involuntary, 
in the form of likes, dislikes, anxiety, fears. Consciously, we start learning, giving response to different stimuli. That is the second kind of learning, as our learning or stimulus less response learning, which needs a lot of practice. And with that, we learn to give the right response to a particular stimulus. But when given another stimulus, we may not be knowing what to respond with. In the third level, when it is chaining, we are able to use the learnt SR responses in a series. In order to perform a particular skill, we use those responses in a sequence. This is called chaining. And then the next one is using words to associate with certain stimuli. And this helps us to identify different objects, different stimuli which are present in the environment. And we learn to even recognize them and use words to identify them. The fifth one is the discrimination learning in which among a class of objects, we are able to discriminate. For example, between the animals which are there, we are able to identify each one from the other. Among the flowers, we are able to identify each one from the other. So in this way, we are able to discriminate between one stimulus and the other. So this is higher level than that of verbal association. And then comes concept learning. Concept involves language. Once we are able to have words to identify objects, then we are able to deal with ideas and then ideas will then be used to form rules and to understand them as we can say the concepts are of rain, water, forests, mangroves and all that. And then the rule is more the mangroves, less is the pollution and more is the absorption of carbon and therefore it is eco-friendly and all such things. And if we come next to the problem solving level, we learn how to solve the problem of pollution or whatever by growing more mangroves, more trees and all that. So in this way, all these are interrelated. Every kind of learning is prerequisite for the next kind of learning and the highest level of learning is problem solving which is very important and therefore we should try to develop higher order thinking skills among our students. Thank you.